Jessie here from the Elyria Arts Council. Today we're going to be doing a mosaic glass project. Let me show you the materials you're going to use. You need some kind of glass container, some chips of stained glass, doesn't matter what color. Uh, you might need a pair of tweezers. I have a couple uh, dowel rods and skewers just in case I need to transfer the glue and I don't want to get my fingers all sticky. Um, I have a little lid that I'm going to pour my glue in and I'm using E6000 which glues just about anything. You will also need some grout for this project. After it has dried for about 24 hours, you'll need to grout the whole design. Let me show you how to do it. So here we go. What I have done is taken an old candle container um, and cleaned out the remnants of the melted candle and I'm repurposing it for this project. I thought it was a really nice shape. Uh, and what I'm going to do with it is after I make the mosaic and finish it, I'm going to put one of those little battery operated votives in it. Um, I think it'll be really pretty having some light shine through it. So what I've done is laid down two chopsticks um, so that my glass container won't roll because chopsticks have a square side on them. It'll help keep this from rolling. Now, what you have to do is have some patience for this project. Um, I'm gonna squirt out a little bit of E6000 because I've found when you're using this, it's faster to not use it directly from the tip. The tip gets really drippy and can just be very annoying and messy. So what I'm gonna do is decide what color scheme I wanna use. And I'm gonna do about 10 pieces at a time. And what you have to do is Get this glue on the glass and it needs to dry for about eight minutes before you can adhere it to your glass. And you also need to put some glue on the glass. Now, you're gonna grout this. So if you get glue on the glass where you don't want it on your glass container, that, that's gonna be covered up by grout eventually. Um, I have a good variety of glass pieces here. Good amount of colors, and I wanna thank uh, Virginia Langston, one of our stained glass artists, for hooking me up with a bunch of nice glass scraps. Um, they're lovely. Some of them are translucent, some of them are opaque so we're gonna have a really nice variety here so what you need to do is get about 10 pieces covered with glue just a little bit it doesn't need to be a whole bunch because remember when you squish it down um, some of it is going to squirt out the sides. So what I'm going to do, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven little pieces of glass. So I'm just going to kind of estimate where I'm going to put them and I'm going to put seven little dots. Okay, there we go. So now we need to set a timer and let it dry and then we will get them positioned on there. So I set my timer for eight minutes, and what happens is, is this E6000, which is a form of epoxy, it forms kind of a skin over top of where you put the glue, and it's the glue is still kind of squishy um, underneath that skin. And what the reason is for waiting eight minutes um, is that this will create a very permanent bond and your your little glass pieces won't slide off this glass. So what I'm going to do is push firmly 
and get my pieces in here. And what I want to do is put them rather close together. So when I do the grout, it looks like this is just loaded with glass and there's very little grout on it. So some of these pieces are odd shapes, which I like, um, and you're just gonna have to kind of fit them together like a puzzle piece. I like this green one, but I think it's so long, I'm gonna have to do it in an up and down fashion. Cause it won't go around the, and I really like this red one. Put that close to the green one. And you'll end up with some gaps and spaces, which will then cause you to hunt for some smaller pieces to fill in those gaps and spaces and it's kind of fun. It's kind of like a game. Now I'm seeing this blue one looks like it's sticking off too much and it's not going around like I want it to. So I think I'm going to remove it and put it somewhere else more vertical. Yeah, see that looks better. And then I'll find something to put in those little spaces. So while I was waiting, I set up another grouping of tiles in a small group um, so that I could kind of continue and keep working. So I am going to try and fit some of these in. And you'll know that you're doing the right thing, that when you know that you've let it dry the right amount of time, I should say, is when you press this down, um, you'll kind of feel, it kind of feels like a bubble popping. Um, if it's really squishy and it slides around, you haven't let it dry for long enough. So eight to 10 minutes <clears throat> is good. If you're using really, really tiny, tiny drops of glue, um, 10 minutes might be too long. So you'll get the hang of it as you work. It takes some time. Um, but it's an awful lot of fun. And it, this is one of those projects that you can work on in shifts and take breaks and come back to it, which I really like to do with projects. So I'm gonna work on this. Um, and of course, I'm gonna set my camera on time-lapse so that you don't have to watch hours and hours of me doing this. Um, and I will talk to you again in a little bit. here as I'm working I really had to before I even put glue on the last few pieces I had to hold them up and see if they were gonna fit <clears throat> in the space that I had and I just kind of had to guess and the one nice thing about this 
E6000 is, it, it takes a while to firm up and dry. So you can scoot things around and move them around until for a good while. Like see that sticks off, I can't use that. Um, so you can still move it around a little and that's nice. So what I'm gonna do is, <clears throat> I'm gonna pick this up and take a look all the way around and see if there's any little spaces that I need to fill. And I'm seeing some right from the beginning and I wanna show you, I also got some of those little styrofoam packing peanuts. Um, <clears throat> I was worried that these chopsticks, after I got some glass on here, would start uh, knocking some of the glass off. It really takes, you know, about 24 hours for this glue to dry completely. So I thought maybe the styrofoam would work really well um, to keep it, keep those glass chips from coming off of there because they're not completely glued yet. Um, you could also use like a little uh, pillow or a rolled up towel or something um, soft. Uh, I didn't find any small towels and I didn't want any big bulky towels on the table. So I just went with the packing peanuts. Um, so what you're going to have to do is let this dry for sure at least 12 to 24 hours. Uh, and then you can grout this and I will show you that process too. So I'm going to finish putting my little tiny chips in the empty spaces and we'll show you the grout when this is all nice and dry. Okay, so phase two of our mosaic glass candle holder here. You can see that it's absolutely lovely with color. Um, this dried overnight, so it dried uh, for probably about 18 hours. So that's really good. Um, what I did was got some pre-mixed grout and this one is called haystack color and it's kind of a tan. Um, what I did, this is, this is a good amount, this is a quart and I am not gonna use nearly that much for this. So what I did was got one of my paint and glaze mixing spatulas and I'm gonna take some of this out and put it in a smaller container um, so that I don't let this quart that I'm not using all of dry out. It's pre-mixed grout. You can buy dry grout and mix it yourself, but hey, pre-mixed grout is the way to go. Perfect consistency. Now, I also have a big tub of water and some sponges, and I have a towel on hand should I need it to wipe with. Um, this is kind of a wet, messy project, so I have a little styrofoam tray here underneath it and if you've ever tiled a floor before it's pretty much the same concept and I did a little test spot here and you can see it filled it in nicely so the concept is to just take a little bit of your grout here and you're smashing it down in the cracks. Now, I found that my fingertip worked really good once I got a good amount of this on there. So you don't have to use a tool if you wanna use your fingers. It's kind of gritty and sandy, so. But you're trying to get it in between all those cracks. That way when you put a light in this candle holder, you'll see just the pretty colors lit up and you won't see all your messy glue that kind of squeezed in between those cracks. It makes it very decorative. Um, so a damp sponge, so if you squeeze it, it's not drippy. And very gently just kind of do a little swiping motion, little short swiping motions. And once this is more has dried a bit. Then you can go back and clean those glass pieces off just a little bit better. You can also 
if it dries too much um, and you don't get the grout off of the tiles in time, you can take an X-Acto knife and scrape it off. You can take a piece of, a, a very fine piece of sandpaper will work too. Um, I'm wondering if it would be helpful to have a dry sponge and a wet sponge on hand, because you can see that my water is kind of beating up on that glass and the the damp sponge is not lifting all the water and the grit off, so maybe I should have a dry sponge at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is finish this, and I'll do it on time lapse so you can see me finish it. But it took about, just to get the glass on yesterday, it took about two and a half hours. So this is a project that requires some patience. So you can see I have all the grout in all the little spaces and as I was going around and cleaning some of my glass mosaic pieces I found some little spaces so I took my finger and filled that with grout. Now what I did what I noticed was my wet sponge dry sponge uh, technique wasn't working as nicely as I'd like it. So what I did was I got a small piece of paper towel and I going around and wiping as much of the residue as I can off of these tiles before everything dries. Because there is going to be some cleanup once it all dries, but from experience of doing this project and doing this project with teenagers, the goopier that you make your grout, the harder it is to get off the glass. So the more that you can get off the glass before this dries, the better. Now, this does dry very fast and my hands were getting really gritty. Um, and it did dry on these glass pieces pretty quickly when it had a very thin skin on it. So I also noticed that where I was extremely sloppy with my E6000 and I got glue on the front of the glass tile, it was harder to get the grout off. So if you choose to do this project and use E6000, um, I would tr try really hard not to get E6000 on the front of these glass tiles or um, what they are truly called, mosaic tiles are truly called tesserae, T-E-S-S-A-R-E, -S -S -E. maybe I didn't pronounce it right, but that's what they're called. Um, I believe it is Italian. So now I'm going to let it dry for whatever the recommended drying time for my grout is. Then I will clean off the front of these tiles and get it shiny and lovely and get a candle inside of it. And don't forget to clean out the inside um, before that grout dries because I dripped some in the, on the inside too. It's looking really nice though. I'm really liking the results. So here's my mosaic glass candle holder. I used a dry, smooth cloth to get as much of that grout film as I could off. And in some places it was a little bit tough, so I used a little scraping tool that I use for pottery. 
Um, I'm thinking the tip of a pair of scissors or a nail file or something would work. Um, it looks really nice and I'm very pleased with it. Uh, I hope you give this project a try. I had a good time doing it. We'll see you next time.